In this video, you will learn what earnings per share is, how to calculate it for any particular stock or company, why it matters as a stock analysis metric, and different ways to get this valuable metric on your Google Sheet and Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so starting with the definition of EPS, earnings per share, we find that EPS is the portion of a company's profit or net income that is allocated to each outstanding share of the stock or company. Therefore, EPS depends on the net income and the number of shares outstanding. And as you can see, I've created this graphic that makes the formula a lot more simple to understand. So here we have earnings per share and the formula for earnings per share is very simple. All you have to do is take the net income and then you divide it by the number of shares outstanding. The easiest way to understand EPS is imagine that you're on a table with all the shareholders of a particular company and you guys were deciding how it is that you can split the income of the company by each share of the company. So what you would do is very simple, just take how much profit or how much net income the company is making in total and then you would divide it by the number of shares and that's how much you would get per share. So if you own five shares, you would get that amount, the EPS, times five. The reason why this metric is so valuable as a stockholder is because it essentially tells you how much money or how much income would correspond to you if the company were to distribute all of the money that it's made to its different shareholders. So therefore you can analyze based on the price that I'm paying for this company, how much am I getting back? And that is a very valuable way of analyzing stocks. Now let me take you through the calculation step by step using Apple as an example. So first we have to get the company's net income and then the shares outstanding. Apple's net income, you can find it online, but here I used uh, the Y sheets function to be able to get the value. So let's say we want to get it for 2021 actually and then the shares outstanding this is the actual number of shares outstanding that Apple has right now and again I'm using the wise price function to be able to get this value so once you have those two numbers it becomes very simple to calculate the EPS all you have to do is take the net income divided by the number of shares outstanding and that essentially tells you what the EPS of that particular company is. Now there's a little bit more nuances involved and we're gonna get into some of those things right now. The first thing to keep in mind is that EPS is not an absolute figure. It depends on the period that you're using. So it could be 2020, it could be 2021, it could be 2019, and that's an annual example. It could also be on the quarterly format. So for example, it could be based on the last quarter in that case, you would do LQ to get the data. And as you can see, the number is different because the net income is different and then the number of shares uh, could also be different as well. Then you also have TTM EPS. And what that is, is uh, the trailing 12 months of net income. What that means is basically adding the last four quarters of financial results to calculate the net income. And as you can see again, the EPS is different as well. So the time frame and the time period that you use is critical to be able to assess what kind of earnings per share metric are you really calculating. If I were to recommend one way to calculate it is to do the TTM method, the trailing 12 months, because then you can more easily compare that with other companies. And this is one of the best uses of EPS. Um, so you can easily compare it the EPS across multiple companies that are somewhat similar. So in this case, we're going to do EPS. And like I said, TTM is one of the best ways to be able to do it because then the number becomes comparable because different companies have different quarters and different dates where they report their financials. But if you use TTM, it kind of eliminates that seasonality element of the net income. I just need to lock in the cell. And now very easily I can just drag it across and now I can see how all these companies compare across the EPS metric from here I can look at different factors that might be influencing uh, the EPS and one of the things that is critical to know about the EPS is that it can be the only metric you look at because 
it can be influenced by many different factors. One of them is when companies start to do um, buyback share programs. So what happens in that case is the net income stays the same, for example, but then the number of shares decrease as the company starts to buy more, uh, more and more shares from different people. And then guess what? That's gonna inflate the EPS of that particular company. So things like this, you have to be mindful of that if you only look at one metric that could be manipulated and mislead you to make the wrong investment decision. The last thing to keep in mind about EPS is that there's two types of EPS, the basic, and this is the one that we've been talking about, but then there's the diluted one. So this is the best way for me to show you. As you can see here, you get the income statement, which is where this information is usually found. And as you can see, the EPS is automatically calculated on a historical basis here. So in this example, the EPS that you see is the basic one. And that again is just taking the net income divided by the number of shares outstanding, which in this case is on a historical basis. So that's the number of weighted average shares outstanding for that period, or in this case for 2021. But the EPS diluted, it's a little bit different. The way it works is that the number of shares might change and you can see how it changes. The basic is this, and this would be the shares outstanding diluted. And this is calculated based of uh, stock options, for example, if they were exercised, what would be the actual number of shares outstanding, which is usually higher than the regular uh, number of shares outstanding. So that also influences the number. And then uh, that, of course, is going to bring the EPS of a company down. Overall, EPS is a great metric that you can return from any of the methods that were shown in this video, such as using Y sheets or the Weiss and Weiss price formulas. And here you can easily calculate it and find it on a historical basis. One of the other best ways to use EPS is to compare with other companies of a similar industry and size. And you can also calculate it manually yourself using the formula that's provided here. When you use EPS, make sure to use it in conjunction with other important stock metrics such as ROIC, ROE, free cash flow per share, etc. If you want, I can make a video on those metrics as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and let me know in the comments what other types of videos you'd like to see next. See you in the next one.